Okay, phase two. So we left off at Nisan 14. Nisan 14 is the day that God gave the children of Israel when he brought them up out of the land of Egypt in Exodus chapter 12, chapter 11. And chapter 12, verse 11, also chapter 11, he talks about this day shall be the first day of the year, or the first day would be Nisan 1. Now, let's say to you that those three days are very important, and until you understand that, you won't understand, amen, the importance of Passover. This message is not about Passover. I don't have time to teach you, but you can go to my website at ntcojc.ning.com. That's ntcojc.ning.com and go to the blog or the um, message called Passover. Or seek me, I can go through the Passover with you. But for today, we're talking about something that is really important also, which is end time prophecy according to Jesus Christ. I repeat, end time prophecy according to Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay, so enough about the calendar for right. Let's move on and let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 24, where we left off on last week. I'll read all the scriptures again and start over. But let me stop here for a minute and thank those of you that are from the New Testament Church of Jesus Christ. We still need your support. I know we can't have service, but we're giving you messages. We need your financial support to continue to stay on the firing line and to get messages to the God of God so they will know what to look for in the future. So those of you that have dealt uh, uh, donations, you can mail them to 3790 Alabama Street. That's in Hobart, Indiana, 46342. I repeat, 3790 Alabama Street in Hobart, 46342. That's Hobart, Indiana. Or you can call me at 219-299-6015. I repeat, 219-299-6015. You can also send money by PayPal or if you have the cash app. Thank you and God bless you. Okay, our message for the day starts in Matthew chapter 24. Here we find that this is the prophecy of Jesus Christ. I'll be reading from the New King James Version for those of you that are using the King James Version. I have them both up, but sometimes the New King James Version use words that you are more familiar with than the Old King James Version. Okay, let's go. Matthew 24 and 1. When Jesus went out and departed from the temple, his disciples came unto him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say unto you that one stone shall not shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Reading on verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, uh, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Now these are three questions very important. It's going to take me some series, so we, this is only series two. I am going to go into detail. One question that was asked, what will be the sign of your coming? We're going to talk about that. Okay, the second question is, um, or the first question was, when shall these things be? The second is, what shall be the sign of your coming? And the third, number three, is, what is the end of the age? 
So when you hear us talking about it's time for the end of the world, we don't mean it's time for the end of the world. We mean it's time for the end of the age as we know it, which means that we're getting ready, preparing to go into, amen, another phase of God's divine plan or purpose. Okay, so now as we look at this, let's go back to the first thing. When shall all these things be? What? All what things? Well, the question was, Jesus told them, he said, you will not see all these things. He said, I'll show you that not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Let's take that first. First of all, what was he talking about? Actually, he was metaphorically talking about himself. Secondly, he was talking about in A.D. 70 when the Jew, the Romans shall tear down the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom or the temple of Israel, which is right now or then it was Solomon's temple, and they were going to annihilate over a million Jews. Some Jews were going to run to the hills, as Christ told them uh, about it in Daniel, amen, uh, speaking of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 also in Daniel chapter 2. Okay, now, but I don't have time to go there right now. Let's go a little bit further. So the first thing that Jesus told them was, excuse me, was the answer to that first question. The answer to that first question, when shall these stones be thrown down and not be a stone left upon another? Well, one, he was talking about his temple. Jesus Christ's body was going to be torn down and there was not going to be him left. Okay? You'll see that later on. It's prophetic. Okay? When you see the things that God talked about, he talked about them in layers. In prophetic uh, uh, shadows and what we call a thing called... Um, God calls them, uh, um, it is a, I'm sorry, I can't think of the word right now, but it is what it's called, it shows you something on the surface. For those people that would not believe God, they can read that on the surface. But then when you look into it and study it, as God says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study it and show thyself a fool. Under God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. So then you go deeper, and he'll give you a for shot, a shot meaning, which means a, a, a hidden message. He did that here. So the message that he wanted them to see from the first value, or from the surface value, was that they're going to tear down the temple. And they're going to kill you. And there is not going to be a stone left. The second message he wanted them to see was that he, Jesus Christ, was going to be destroyed, his body, for the saving of the entire world. And then, amen, we're going to move on further before we talk about the last one, which is the sign of your coming and the uh, 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 final one, which is the end of the age. Now, let me say this about the end of the age. People, get serious. This is not a joke. This is real. People are dying by the thousands. I repeat that. By the thousands per day. They have rolled up trucks, refrigerated trucks up in New York. They're paying $99.90 for people to fly in from Atlanta all over the world. They're going to pay them $99 to go there and put their lives on the line. The doctors are scared. The nurses are scared. Everybody is losing their life. Now, let me seriously talk to you about the end of the age. This is just the preparation. This is just the preparation of the end of the age. Let's read a little bit further into God's Word and we'll see. Okay, all right, verse number four in Matthew 24. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Now, let me tell you something about that. It's very important that you realize that they have stopped all church going. They have stopped all worship service because they want to weaken the nations as God promised it would happen in Revelation chapter 13. Now, what they're going to do is 
if you cut off the head, the rest of the body will flounder until it dies. Let me explain. When I was a child, we had chickens in our backyard. And we raised them from little bitty. But when they got of age to be a fryer, we would take them out in the backyard, get a basket or a tub, and put ring off their neck and put that chicken in the basket and put a top on it so all that blood wouldn't flop all over every place. So what is the point? When you remove the head of the chicken, the rest of the body will be destroyed because it has no sense of direction. So if they remove people like Pastor Denny that tell you the truth, that stand for the truth, that's what the demon wants to do. Then the rest of the people, the flock, the young people that following Jesus, just like the disciples did, they ran and hid. Nobody was there to say, and even he, Peter, lied when they came to him and said, you was with Jesus. He said no, and he ended up cursing on the third time as Jesus had prophesied. So you remove the head, the people that know what God is saying, amen, and then they will, uh, amen, the spiritual uh, wickedness will take over. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I don't have a lot of time on anything today. Catch up with me if you want to know more. Let me tell you a little bit more about this thing called uh, Jesus said, take heed that no one deceive you. There's going to come times now. There's going to be preachers that's going to be rising for the purpose of making money. I don't get paid. I don't collect no time. I do not take your money. I don't want your money. I want your soul saved for God. And I want you to know that. Now, somebody might call me crazy. Yes, I am crazy for Christ's sake. But I want you to know this. Those people that are going to come, they're going to falsely embezzle your money and your time and you're going to think because you're going to be so nervous without leadership, without true mercy that you're going to be doing it and giving it to them. So God said in his message to the world before he was hung on his cross, he said uh, uh, through Jesus Christ, he said, take heed that no one, no man deceives you. For many will come in my name saying I am Christ. They're going to be false Christ. Time out. I need to check my video. Stop. Yep. No. If you stand somewhere, it blocks that screen off. What happened? It don't, you don't show it. It shows you your body.